welcome back and welcome if you're new. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I'm Sabrina Van Kirk and I'm happy to have you. Today's topic has been something I've been wanting to share for a while now and I just now got down to planning it and writing stuff down and so I'm super excited to talk about this. This is something that, like I said, has been on my heart and I've been really wanting to share. So um, today's topic is how to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. Um, as most of you know who are stay-at-home moms or have been at one point in your life, um, you know it gets busy, crazy, you know, you're home all day with the kids and depending on if you have many or not a whole lot of kids, it doesn't matter, it's still crazy and you know, you kind of can feel like things are just not as enjoyable as you, you know, you tend to you tend to get down sometimes and get you fall into the routine of day-to-day -day living and just surviving while I want to talk about how to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom and so that's what we're gonna talk about today so let's go ahead and let's jump right in all right so for those of you who don't know I'm a stay-at-home mom of two kids so far anyway we plan on having more children and it, we hope to have a full house of children someday, but anyway, right now we just have two little kids that we love and adore. I have a two-year-old son named Judah, and I have a one-year-old daughter named Kyla. And so I love those kids to death, and I love being a mom. Um, I have been able to find joy in motherhood being a stay-at-home mom, but granted, um, there are times when I don't feel joyful about it, when I feel like I don't want to be a, a stay-at-home mom when I feel like it would maybe be easier to be out in the workforce and be a, you know, a, a not a stay-at-home mom. And, um, but really my heart is here at home with my kids. And so I would never actually want to, it's just my mind can get stuck on the negative things about being a stay-at-home mom. And so what I wanna talk about today is how to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. Um, and these are just some things that I've written down that I kind of felt that helped me be more joyful in my walk as a stay-at-home mom. And so I wanted to share them with you, but I also wanted to kind of just tell you guys why I want, why I chose to be a stay-at-home mom. There's a couple reasons, but the main reason is actually due to my mom. Um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom uh, for most of my life, actually for all of my life. And um, I'm the oldest of nine children. Um, she she just gave me an outlook on motherhood that was enjoyable and she enjoyed it. She truly, I could just see it on her face and the way she treated us and my dad and um, how she treated the house. She just enjoyed it. Was it perfect all the time? Did she get angry sometimes? Yes and no, uh, no and yes. She did not always enjoy her job. Do any of us always enjoy our job? Like 100% of the time? Sometimes there's a con thrown in there that we just don't enjoy it. Um, but that's life. There's a lot of pros and cons in life and you just kind of have to deal with it. But there's also ways you can kind of help enjoy it, make it enjoyable, make it more um, where you can find joy in your job. The reason main, mainly behind me wanting me being a stay-at-home mom is because of my mom. Because I saw her raise us and she loved it. She enjoyed being a stay-at-home mom. And it was amazing to just see her really work hard to make our home happy and enjoyable. And anyway, so she gave me a really good and amazing outlook on motherhood. Uh, she really enjoyed it. And so that's what really made me um, want to be a stay-at-home mom, is just watching my mom. Um, another reason why I really um, chose to be a stay-at-home mom was actually something Josiah and I felt God had laid on my heart, laid on his heart to do. And um, we felt it was the most biblical approach to parenting. And so we um, pretty much always agreed on me staying home with children with our future children and um, at the time and Josiah would go to work and we just feel that's the most biblical way of doing it and um, it's fine if you disagree that's just how we felt and that was a big major reason why I stay home and I feel very strongly um, that the Lord has put this on my heart to do and I believe 100% that this is what God has called me to 
and he, yeah, I believe that he has called me to be a stay-at-home mom and be with my children every day. <laughs> and so, yeah, so those, that was the other reason. And then, you know, some other little reasons are just, I wanted to, I never wanted to work outside the home um, as a, you know, career mom. I never wanted to be any of that. And I understand that some women have to do that. They're single parents or, you know, it's just, it is what it is, and I understand that. I'm not judging anyone here. Um, this is just how we decided that I would stay home. And so, anyway, so those are the reasons why I chose to be a stay-at-home mom, and I love it, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Also wanted to mention that it's been my dream since I was a kid, so um, that helps. <laughs> but anyway, so let's go ahead and let's move on. Also wanted to just put it out there, some people have asked me if I ever had like a career choice before I became a mom or a wife or anything like that. And I mean, as a kid, yeah, you, you kind of grow into this, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And people ask you that all the time. And um, I always just had the answer of I wanted to be a mom. I always told people that. Um, and I always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I mean, I had other things that I would I would think about, like, oh, maybe before I get married, I'll do this. Um, but really, I've always truly wanted to just be a stay-at-home mom, a wife, a homemaker, and that that actually <laughs> I can identify with that all the way. I am a 100% homemaker at heart, and that is exactly what I wanted to be when I was a kid. Um, I have some career, not career, career, but um, being a stay-at-home mom does not mean you can't pursue um, work at home. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account that I try to be a semi-influencer um, per se, as like a motherhood influencer, so go check me out if you're interested, but anyway. And um, I do Pinterest, and um, I actually, just, I'm just looking over um, trying to get my certification as a doula and so that's another thing that I'm super excited about and I'm gonna still be a stay-at-home mom but there's you know that's working um, and so I'm I've always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom but that doesn't necessarily mean that I always wanted to be home 100% of the time every day every hour every week every minute um, it just means that May, my main job and the uh, job of that my job is being a homemaker first and foremost well first and foremost I'm a Christian but my job here on earth is first and foremost being a homemaker to my children my husband and my children and so I want to serve them in that way and I feel that that is what God has called me to do so anyway I have always wanted to be a mom um, but yeah I'm excited to also try to get my doula certification and I'm really excited about that and that's something I can do as a stay-at-home mom and I can kind of go at my own pace so that's something I've always just been really excited about birth and so it really falls in perfect line with actually being a homemaker because you're home you're you know off and on you're pregnant and all that kind of stuff so really that's that's it so anyway that's why I I've always pretty much wanted to be. All right, so let's go ahead and get into how to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. So I kind of just outlined some reasons that have helped me um, being a mom, and I also kind of, um, yeah, I kind of combined stuff that's helped me enjoy being a stay-at-home mom and other things that people have said online, and um, just learning from what my mom has said in the past. So I've kind of just created a little list of things that really help help you enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. Because I know um, it can get really hard and can, you can get down sometimes just feeling, you know, like, oh, I'm always focusing on the negative. What is there that's, you know, something I can focus on good? Um, and that's kind of what I want to talk about and want to help you with. So also just kind of want to mention, I am not a perfect mother in any shape or form. I sometimes yell at my children. I sometimes lose my temper. I do things that I regret, but that does not mean I don't try to be a good mom. Um, there are things that I do that aren't right, aren't perfect, but I love my children completely. I would do, I would die for them if I had to. I would do pretty much anything for them. And, um, you know, God is really 
worked on my heart to be more patient with my children, and that's not always easy, but that does help. Another thing that does help with the whole being a stay-at-home mom is just being patient with your kids. But anyway, so let's go ahead, and I want to share the first thing that I feel has helped me enjoy being a stay-at-home mom. So the first and foremost thing is spend time with God. Spend time with the Lord. Um, if you're a Christian, then you know that it's so important to spend time with our Father and just spend time in the Word, reading His Word, praying, um, talking to God on a regular basis every day throughout your day. Um, it just helps you have a sense of joy for what you're doing that day. And I think a lot of times we can get stuck in this pattern of just getting it done, surviving. And I think we need to get away from that and just focus more on what God wants us to do. God wants us to be joyful in, some, in the path he's given us. And so anyway, um, I just, that, I, I felt that that was a, the, one of the top things on the list. It is the top thing. Just spend time with God. He, you know, reading your word and praying and talking to God, especially first thing in the morning before the kids wake up, if you can get up before them. But it, just at some point in, you know, in the day, just spend time with our Father. Spend time with God. Um, he wants to hear you. He wants to talk to you. And He wants you to talk to Him. And laying your burdens on the Lord, it's a real thing. It's super helpful. <laughs> and He's there for you. He's there to help you through this. And knowing that already makes it more joyful and more worth it. Because He's God is always here for you. Even when people aren't always with you, always there for you, God is. He's here 100% of the time. And so anyway, I would highly recommend, in order to be joyful, really try to spend time with God. You will, it's amazing what some Bible reading and praying and just really talking to God will do for you. So it definitely makes me more joyful. So anyway, that's the first thing. The second thing that I felt was very important was to, and not at all moms can do this in certain, in certain seasons of motherhood, is get up before your children do. <laughs> um, this is something that I found has helped me so much. I find more joy if I can get up and start the day before my children start the day. And the reason really behind that is when you get up in the morning, you have time to what? You have time to eat. You have time to take your supplements, um, read the Bible, um, get a glass of water. <laughs> um, but the main thing for me anyway is take a shower. Oh my goodness. Like getting up and taking a shower before the kids wake up, it just wonders for the soul. I mean, I absolutely cannot go without a shower. Um, it's just, I mean, I can. I just don't like to. Um, and so I always try to take a shower in the morning and so getting up early before the kids That's a big thing that helps me feel more joyful and have more joy in the day is when I feel ready. I feel Okay, I can take this day on with I'm clean my hair's up. I maybe have some earrings in. maybe I put some makeup on um, But it just kind of helps so like get up before the kids try to have a cup of coffee a cup of tea um, read your word, read the Bible, whatever you can fit in before the kids wake up. Um, just don't get yourself stressed out. But, you know, just try to get as much done um, for your personal time as you can before the kids wake up. That's something that has helped me so much to just be more joyful by taking a shower. Because if you're, if you feel gross, dirty, sweaty, and you feel, or you feel like you haven't had your morning coffee or tea, or you really feel like, oh, I haven't had that, you know, morning one-on-one -on -one with God, and I feel so distracted and just kind of like, blah. Um, then that's going to make it really hard to be joyful when your kids wake up. Um, I have had many times where the kids have woken up earlier than they usually do, and I've, you know, I've really just been like, I'm looking at them, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you need to stop it. It's so, you know, especially when I get up late and I know that one of the kids is probably awake and it's just really hard to um, feel the joy there if you haven't gotten done what you feel like you really want to get done. Um, but yeah, it just helps 
helps your men your mental state and it helps you to be more positive if you've had a shower if you've gotten ready and gotten some things done um, and had that Bible time just had that your me time I guess you could say having that me time really does help so that can help you look more positive towards the day and feel more prepared um, if you're prepared you feel a lot better and more joyful in my mind anyway some people are just like fly by the seat of their pants and just go but that's not me so anyway um sometimes I can be that way but very rarely <laughs> um anyway so yeah just get up earlier if possible if you can't then I understand that like you know especially if you've just had a baby or your baby's not sleeping through the night and you need that extra sleep um then I would say that just you know take your baby in the shower with you um set the baby down in a bassinet um have your youngest or your oldest if you have one uh, lock the doors so they don't go outside I've I've learned this anyway and then um, put a little show on while you take a shower and if they like them if they don't then give them something else to do but um just having that that you time to just kind of take a shower helps so anyway I understand it's totally understandable if you can't but if you can it would definitely work on trying to get that me time in before the kids wake up so anyway the next thing is something that I, I struggle with so much oh and I struggled with the first one too for a while just getting the time to set aside for God but anyway so the third thing I kind of want to talk about is talking to your husband communicating with your spouse your other half um, it's imperative in so when you're troubled and things aren't going your way or you feel annoyed or you just need some time um, or you just need to talk to someone your spouse is there for that specific purpose i struggle with this so much my poor husband sometimes he's just been like what's wrong i'm like nothing nothing and then you know i burst into tears and he's like what and i'm like this and this is wrong and you know he's like well why didn't you just tell me and I'm like I don't know <laughs> and it's just it's silly I I struggle with just talking talking about my feelings um, you know you I'm I'm not a touchy-feely kind of person I mean I am but I'm not um, I am to a certain point and then once that I'm past that point I kind of just shut up like a clam and don't want to talk so um, my so my husband, he's super sweet and kind, and I just need to talk to him more when something's bugging me instead of trying to get him to guess. Women, ladies. Men cannot read your mind, okay? I know this is hard to hear because it was hard for me to hear, and I still struggle with it, but they can't read your mind. They're not a woman, and honestly, not, not all women can read our, you know, we can't read each other's mind, minds either. So why do we think men can? I mean, really? Um... I'm preaching to myself here like I literally have this so bad my poor husband anyway so what I'm trying to make the point here is that just talk to him okay you need that adult conversation you need to now don't complain to your husband there's a big difference don't complain to him um, a little bit of like, oh, the kids were really rough today. It's not complaining necessarily, but you're just kind of, you're sharing your feelings. You're sharing what really was, what was hard that day. And you just need to pour it out. You know, sometimes husbands come home and they talk about their day. But a lot of times the wife doesn't talk about their day, or at least in my house. It, it may very well be different. It's different from house to house. But anyway, in my mind, in my scenario, um, I, I very much will just ask Josiah about his day and um, I'll, I, I used to be worse at it. Now I actually tell him about my day and um, I try to kind of just get it out there and stop bottling up inside. And so that's going to help you be more joyful if you're not bottling, bottling, <laughs> keeping that all inside, bottled up. And because if you keep bottling it up, eventually it's going to get to the point where it just pops and then it's going to be an over amount of emotion and you don't want that so anyway <clears throat> it really helps to communicate with your spouse really talk to them and really um, engage with them and tell them what's going on in your life and really just 
connect with them emotionally. So anyway, that will help you be so much more joyful and enjoy your life as a stay-at-home mom. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing that I kind of wrote down was um, get together with other moms. This is a big one. Um, and it's actually one that I'm fairly, I, I'm not necessarily good at, but I really like to do. And I have another mom who I get together with on a pretty regular basis. It kind of ebbs and flows depending on how busy each of our lives are. But I have this mom who actually we were friends. Um, as teenagers, we were really close friends. And um, she's actually a YouTuber. You guys should go check her out. She, I have mentioned her in my videos before, but she's a great, um, great mama. Love her to death. She's actually pregnant with their third baby. And um, so go check her out. Her YouTube channel is Wilson Homestead. And um, she is just an amazing mom to get together with and talk about. We don't agree on everything. Um, that doesn't like keep us from getting together. And it really does help us be more joyful in being a stay-at-home mom. She's a stay-at-home mom too. And so getting together and talking about our struggles every day to day in life and being pregnant or, you know, like spouse stuff, just being marriage, marriage kids. I mean, you, you name it, we've probably talked about it. And then while we're talking and getting that much needed social time, um, our kids are also socializing and playing. And so um, that's really needed, I think. And it really, a lot of moms can get into the, 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 the mindset that I gotta stay home, I gotta get everything done so that my house is always clean, the food's always prepped, um, you name it, you know, the jobs are done, right? I would say, let some things go, give yourself some time to just enjoy some time with another mom. Um, I know that my mom, growing up, we went to play dates all the time, or not all the time, but enough that she was able to have some sanity. She needs that sane conversation with another woman or another mom, basically, to just share the burdens, share the, the life stuff of being a stay-at-home mom or just being a mom in general. You don't have to be a stay-at-home mom to totally get what I'm talking about. Like, you need that extra conversation with a mom to just kind of say, oh, I'm not the only one going through this. So it's really important to share with another mom. Talk to another mom, get together. It really, really helps your emotional state, trust me. So I would highly recommend in order to be, have to enjoy life as a stay-at-home mom, really try to get together with other moms that are like-minded, don't have to be completely like-minded. Like I said, my friend and I don't agree on everything. We still get together, we still talk about stuff, and we enjoy each other's company. So, big one there. The other one that I wanna talk about is, is really imperative, and this is something I think all moms struggle with, is give yourself grace. A lot of us try to just keep going, 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 going. I can get this done, I've gotta go, I've gotta get everything done. Get done what you can get done. Um, you know, we can get to this point where we just have this long list and we have to get it done. And then by the end of the day, we are shocked. We're just, we're done. And we didn't get half the things done that we that we said we were going to because we got what? We got preoccupied. We The, kid, the kids were terribly grumpy. Um, the kid had an accident. The toilet flooded. Stuff like that happens, it's like, anyway, life, again, it just happens. And so you're not gonna be able to get everything done that you wanna get done. It's just, it's not gonna happen. Some days when maybe the kids aren't home or like today, I am, I'm kid free for the day. My mother-in-law has them, it's amazing. Um, I got pretty much everything done that I said I was gonna get done, which is great. Um, but those are rare and you need to give yourself grace and understand that you're not going to be able to get everything done that you want to get done. You also need not set yourself up for failure. If you're constantly saying, well, I need to write a list, I need to make sure I get everything done on it, um, you're probably not going to because you're going to get that sense of, you're just going to get overwhelmed. And um, especially as you have more children. Um, when they're young anyway, is you have to take care of them 100% of the time. You have to kiss their boo-boo, you have to hug them and love them and make sure they're safe and keep them from harm. And that right there is a full-time job. So trying to get the house cleaned and dinner cooked is an added thing that you have to do. And so 
you know, you have your children, you have that job of keeping them safe and out of harm's way, teaching them, raising them, and then you also have the household to run. And then when you put those together, that's a lot to do, and then you put extra stuff on top. That is when it can get overwhelming. You can totally do extra stuff, I'm not saying that, and you can totally try to do your best at doing all of those things, but give yourself grace and think through things and be like, okay, well, I wanna get all this done, I might not be able to. Fit as much as you can in when your kids are napping. Um, or what I like to do, and it really helps a lot, is actually do a lot of chores and stuff while they're awake, while your kids are awake. Cause it kind of just helps them learn how to clean and do chores and help you. Um, but also it just kind of helps you once you have that quiet time forever, however many hours your kids nap, um, then you have that time for more of what you want to get done, what needs to get done that the kids can't be around for you to do. And so, um, but yeah, just give yourself grace. You know, you're not gonna be able to do it all. So just do what you can do. And don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Don't put so much stuff on your shoulders and ask for help when you need it. So give yourself some grace and just breathe through being a mom because it's hard. Everybody has, all of us mamas know that it's not easy, especially when you're staying at home. So, um, and I'm sure it's hard being a working mom too, but I'm just talking about being a stay-at-home mom right now. But this is definitely gonna help you be more joyful and enjoy being a stay-at-home mom because if you're constantly overwhelmed, then you're not gonna have much joy. And so if you give yourself grace, then you're gonna have, you're gonna be able to enjoy some things because you're not so overwhelmed. So anyway. All right, so the last thing, and it's a big one, is ask for help. This one can be really hard for a lot of mamas out there. It's hard for me, but, but not as much as I've seen other mamas struggle with it. Um, other moms have struggled with it more than I have. And <clears throat> I, I grew up in a home where my mom always kind of taught us that you need to ask for help as a mom because you need that help. You know, it's, it's just, it's a lot to do it all on your own. And that's why your spouse is there. Um, you know, God doesn't give us this parenting job to do all on our own. And sometimes you do have to do all on, all on your own. And most of the time that's not a choice. But when you have your spouse, they're there to help you. And so your spouse, you know, they're there to help you. But I'm more talking about extra help, like your mother-in-law or your mother or your sister or your brother or you know a cousin or a girl in church or a guy in church somebody you just need to ask for more help um doing it all on your own is not going to get you far because we're not perfect and life is hard and god gives us people to, friends and people who love us and we need to sometimes ask them for help and that's okay, you know, ask a grandmother, ask somebody to come alongside you and say, I really need some help or I really need a break. Can you please watch the kids? Or maybe it's not watching the kids. Maybe it's like, my house is a wreck or you just had a baby. The house is a mess. The kids are screaming. You're trying to feed the baby and you're like, help me please, you know? And with my situation, I was able, I'm able to call my mom or call my mother-in-law or my sister-in-law or my sisters or whatever and be like, I've got to have some help guys. Anybody off work or can you guys set aside some time to just come and help me? Um, Cause my husband works a lot. And so I've had times where I've just had to been like, I really need some help. And then they've offered and I'd be like, yes, that would be great. Thank you. Um, the reasons that we, you know, the reasons that we don't ask people is really just a big pride thing. And we need as mothers to just kind of let that go and let yourself humble, just humbly be like, okay, Lord, I do need help. And so just really, yeah, just ask for help. Or when people ask for ask to help you, then say, okay, yes, I could actually use some help in this A, B, C, or D. Um, and sometimes you're not always like, oh, I need help with this, or you're not sure when they ask. Well, just say, okay, well, they asked, so, or they said like, anytime you need any help, call me. Call them, they offered, so call them. 
Um, I know some moms who aren't around family um, and they don't have they don't have any family in their area. They just moved. Um, I would highly recommend finding a good babysitter, get to know some people in the community or a church, and find someone you trust and then have them watch your kids um, because it's going to help you just mentally. It's going to really help you. So really try to give yourself a break every once in a while and have pe let people help you. Just let people help you. Trust me, it's going to help you a, a, an amazing amount. And set those date nights aside for you and your husband because that is imperative in being a, enjoying motherhood, be, uh, being a stay-at-home mom. If you want to enjoy being a stay-at-home mom, then you need to make time for not only you, but your husband, even more for your husband, for your relationship with your husband. And so just really try and ask for help when you need it. And um, don't be afraid to ask, because I know there's a lot of people out there who would be more than willing to help. So I know I kind of went along with that, but it's, it's important to ask for help because you can get overwhelmed really easily and just asking for help, giving yourself a break from the kids kind of helps you put your um, perspective more in focus. And so it can help you be, or just it can help you really enjoy being a stay-at-home mom way more if you give yourself some time and let people help you. So, all right guys, so those are the things that mainly just I felt have really helped me enjoy being a stay-at-home mom more. And um, I know that it's hard and sometimes it's not all enjoyable. And so having these things to keep in mind and just remember that, oh, these are some good things to help me more enjoy my life as a stay-at-home mom. These will help if I do this and I don't always focus and don't always focus on the negative over here. Try to focus more on positive and what you're doing for your kids and all these things that you there's more, there's totally tons more things I could add to this list. But because I didn't want to make this a super uber duper long <laughs> video, I just did some top like six things. And so anyway, I hope that some of these helped you um help some of you anyway that maybe you've been struggling with having joy or being, or even just enjoying being a stay-at-home mom. Um, so I hope that some of this helped you guys. And for those of you who it did help, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know. And if you have anything to add to this list, please let me know also in the comment section down below. I would love to know what your opinion is. I love talking to other mamas about it. And so please do check my, or please do leave a comment if you'd like. And also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing for more content like this. I upload new videos every, every Tuesday and Thursday and my videos consist of lifestyle and mommy tips and all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, I hope you guys had a, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great one. Bye.